Hey guys, Thing Fishy here. So make your character, choose the Confessor starting class, and grab a golden seed as your starting item. Now while we run to Torrent, let's talk about this video. Welcome to build guide number 9, and this one is a strength int build. And when I say strength int build, in this playthrough we go to 26 int and don't use a single spell, so maybe I'm stretching it a little there. But it's the first of many and I really wanted to use the Star Scourge Greatsword, as it's without doubt one of the coolest looking weapons in the game. This is also the playthrough where I do something very uncharacteristic and actually level some endurance and wear some decent armour. So let's talk about setup. As usual, I followed my standard setup route, link to the full video and play along guide in the description. And unfortunately, you're going to have to do all of it for this build, as we're starting off with a smithing stone weapon, then moving to a somber stone weapon. The only thing that you need to do along the way is to free Alexander from his hole in Limgrave, and then... Oh come on, it's the Thanos build, everyone hates Thanos, right? So we pick up the action here, at Fort Gale in Kaled. We're here to grab the Flame Grant Me Strength incantation, and for anyone wondering why we started as Confessor on a Strength Int build, this is the reason. Confessor needs only one extra point in Faith to use Flame Grant Me Strength. And because of this, Confessor is a better choice than Hero for any Strength based build. Now we're going to walk to the Altus Plateau Highway Junction Grace, and head northeast up the road to the Broken Bridge. Use the teleporter, and then head south through the forest to the Altus Tunnel. There's five smithing stones in this cave that we need to grab, but the main reason that we're here, the main reason, the main, the, the, the main reason that we're here is to grab the Arsenal Charm plus one. Now head to Kaled to the particularly dangerous area just east of the Minor Ur Tree, to the back of this carriage. Yeah, it's pretty rough. All these guys are late game level and will one shot you, so quit out if it's looking a bit sketchy. Then grab the greatsword out of the chest in the back. Now head to Lena's Rise in Eastern Kaelid and make it night. Jump onto the side of the bridge and bait the Knight's Cavalry's jump attack to make him fall off. Now warp to Fort Farath, equip the Morning Star and apply Bleed Grease to it. Kill Grail and pop a Pickled Foulfoot just as she dies. Now head to the Round Table. Buy all of the extra smithing stones that you need and a dagger from the shop. Level the Greatsword to plus 16 now because that was such an expensive experience, we're going to now pop all of the runes that we have in order to get some extra levels. Level up at the table. Now for some defence and some fashion we're going to head into Rhea Lucaria. Run through the dungeon and jump down this cliff to grab the Carian Knight Armour. And if you're taking your cosplay seriously, you can head to the Demi-Human Cave in Limgrave, kill the Demi-Human Gank Squad for the tailoring tools so you can ditch the cape. So we're back at Fort Gale. Upgrade your flasks if you haven't already and equip the strength and crack tiers to your physic. So first off, do a quick one way trip to grab the Star Scourge heirloom for later. Then we're going to kill this knight at the top, then drop down for this lion enemy. Kill him and grab the Lion Claw Ash of War, then walk to the Grace by EG, drop down the ledge and ride north along the cliffs to get to the Intelligence Knot tier. Now we're actually going to kill Loretta first in this run so we can be all set up for Margit as is traditional on these guides. At the Grace, apply the Golden Vow Ash of War to your dagger and the Lion's Claw Ash of War to your greatsword. Outside the arena, Equip Radagon Sword Seal and cast Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength. Again, this is going to be our setup for the whole run. Loretta is super easy. All it takes is four Lion's Claws. Now out of the arena and round to the right, 
to find this scarab. Bonk him on the head for the frozen armament spell. Now go grab the grace in Rani's rise so we don't have to get it later. And for the final part of our setup, warp to the merchant on the Liurnia shoreside and buy a staff. So you can have all your stuff equipped without fat rolling, equip the Confessor trousers. Now it's time for Margit. At the Grace, equip the Intelligence and the Strength tiers to your Physic. Outside the Fog Gate, drink your Physic, buff with Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength, then use the Frozen Armament spell and top up your FP. Like Loretta, four Lion's Claws is all it takes. Now, for your extra talisman slot, there's two schools of thought. You can either use the Axe Talisman and focus on charged R2s, or use Alexander's Shard and focus on Lion's Claws. I'm going for the latter as it's a little faster, but the former is better for posture damage. Run through Stormvale all the way to Godric. Buff outside the door. By the way, don't panic if you mess up some of these inputs. I, I did it quite a lot. Again, for this fight, use either Lion's Claws or Charged R2s for Phase 1. His long cooldowns give us plenty of time for either. For Phase 2, run straight up to him and kill him before he's even finished his first attack. Now head to Rare Lucaria for Red Wolf. Buff outside the door, then head in. And this is a ridiculously easy fight, as it only takes two hits to... <laughs> Level up the Grace, then head up to Renala. Punch the Sweetings to prevent them spawning all over the place. Take Renala to one hit away from death, then buff up when the sixth Sweeting dies. For phase 2, run straight up to her and do two Lion's Claws, then one more hit for the win. Now head back to Enya at the round table to grab the third talisman slot. And now we head to Volcano Manor. Speak to Tanith and head through the dungeon. When you get to the Guest Hall Grace, we want to drop down and grab the Sombre Six on this roof, then to the other roof for the Smithing Stone Six, then roll through the lava for more Smithing Stone Sixes. Then up the elevator and along this ledge for a Sombre Five. You can pop back to EG at this point and upgrade the Greatsword one more time if you want to. Now it's time for Godskin Noble, so buff up outside the arena and head in for a very easy fight. Okay, so for this we're focusing on staggers. Get three Lion's Claws in for a stagger and take the riposte into phase two. As soon as the riposte ends, do another Lion's Claw to cancel the roll. Then, Two more hits to victory. Now make sure you have two stone sword keys, grab the golden rune 12 by the temple and head through the dungeon, head through the dungeon, head through the dungeon to the stone sword key gate. Go through and pick up the dagger talisman that you can see me walking past here. Then drop down to get the Somber Stone 7 by the Abductor outside. Now back through the dungeon, again to Rykard. As always, equip the Lance in the right hand, Serpent Hunter in your left, and do crouching pokes through both phases. As I've seen a few people ask about this in the comments, the main benefit of doing this crouching poke strat is to stun Rykard out of his second phase Skull Spam attack. He'll be dead before he can do it with this strategy, and it saves you having to run around in panic for a while. Now to Kaelid for Radan. 
Now, this is a little earlier than we usually fight him, so don't expect the ludicrous damage we've seen on other builds. But that being said, it's still a pretty easy fight. Ride away from him at the start of the fight to despawn him and skip the run. Buff up in sheer panic as he runs towards you. That's the first time I got it right on the whole run. Then get stuck in with your lion's claws. Between his scripted attacks in phase 1 and the big one at the start of phase 2, there is more than enough time to kill him safely. Head back to the round table to Enya and grab our main weapon for this run, the Star Scourge Greatsword. Head to EG, buying any Sombers that you haven't got, and upgrade to plus 9. Head to the Grace by Fort Hyatt in Limgrave, pop a Golden Rune 12, and level up. Now we're going to head down into Nokron. Ride through and light the Ancestral Woods Grace for later. Then through the woods and into the Aqueduct, all the way to Gargoyles. And again, this is a little earlier than we usually fight them, but as you'll see, our damage is very, very good. For optimum damage with these swords, jump attacks are the way forward. Now there's a couple of things about this weapon that you'll notice straight away when you start using it. First, whose bloody idea was it to have the two-handed moveset be on the R1 button? The amount of times in this run that I jumped at an open enemy and blocked was excruciating, so you have to get used to that. Secondly, they have a very long cooldown. If you don't know what I mean by that, the time between landing an attack and being able to dodge is much longer than any other weapon that you've seen in my guides. FromSoft have patched this recently to improve this cooldown, but it's still noticeable if you're used to faster weapons. And thirdly, whilst the jump attack gives us ludicrously high AR, it's not that great for posture damage. So playing with this weapon kind of reminds me of doing a standard Giant Crusher run. Massive damage, but you can't really rely on getting staggers on a lot of enemies. Because of this we need to choose our openings wisely, which against Gargs means you have to really take your time. Now head through deep root depths to the Nameless City Grace. We're here to kill just one enemy because he drops some grey armour. Unfortunately, that enemy is a Crucible Knight boss, but don't panic, it shouldn't be that bad. And he one-shots you, spiffing. Okay, I got a plan. Head back to Stormvale Castle and kill Gostok. Then back to the round table, hand over his bell bearing and buy the buckler. Right, let's try that again, old chap. Try one-shotting me now. Oh, thank God that's over. Right, give me that sweet armor. Wait. Oh, don't tell me it's in the chest. It's in the fucking chest. I could have just run past him. Walk back to Altus and take a few moments to bask in the glory of your very, very strong look. Equip the Arsenal Charm to get medium equip load. And head across Altus to the Draconic Tree Sentinel. There isn't much to say here. Spamming jumping R1s should be fine. Just watch out for those slow cooldowns. Head all the way through Lindell to the West Avenue Balcony Grace. Go back, buff up and bully the Avatar. Pop the Lord's Rune and level up. Now head through the rest of the capital for Godfrey. And he's a little bit more of a problem than usual here. 
as our rolling R1s, which are normally the perfect choice for him, can miss a lot of the time, but they do big damage when they hit. Unfortunately, I'd say this is probably still the safest way of fighting him, as standard R1s here are very risky because of that cooldown. Now, to fill our fourth talisman slot, we're going to head back to the secluded cell in Stormvale Castle, run through the plaza area and pass the grafted scion, give him a bonk if you feel like it, and up the elevator to the grace. From here, go outside and jump onto this rooftop, up the broken pillar and up the ladder for the claw talisman to boost our jumping attacks. Now back to the capital for Morgoth. And this is a super easy one. Two jumping attacks will trigger the dagger attack. One more will stagger him out of it and into phase two. From there, just two more jumping attacks will do it. Now head up to the mountaintops of the giants. And at this point, I had a really silly idea. Yeah fighting Commander Nile before Fire Giant. Now, if Nile terrifies you, you can leave him till later. Fighting him gives us two levels and a weapon upgrade, but it won't make fighting Fire Giant that much different. So thankfully this weapon is pretty good for dealing with the summons. One jump attack will stun them and give you enough time for the second which will kill. As usual, take the right one out first. For Nile, Buff while he does his big windy thing, and then keep your distance. Now we can actually get a really consistent strat here for over half of his health with just one parry and a dodge. Both of Niall's distance closing attacks have very easy parry counters. When he jumps at you with the electric foot, dodge straight forward into him and parry the follow up attack. Once you've got that parry, take the riposte and do a single R1 as he's standing up. This will always make him do the big tornado attack. Dodge this and get four jump attacks in during that long recovery. From here, you can either continue to keep your distance and parry the small tornado attack or the electric foot attack. Grab the first half of the secret medallion and walk back to the ball prawn shack in the Urnia and into the village of the Albanurix to grab the other half of the medallion and while you're here, mushrooms and St. Trina's lilies for later. Then to the rolled lift and through the snowfield all the way to Ordener Town. Level up at the Grace, then head southwest towards the Mogwin Teleporter. Jump onto this ledge to cheese the invader, then use the teleporter to travel to Mogwin Palace. Run through the dungeon and all the way up to the midpoint Grace. Then run past all of these guys and grab the ancient Somber Stone. You can take this back to EG and plus 10 your weapon. Now ride through the rest of the mountain tops, all the way to the Grace by Fire Giant. And it's a relatively simple Fire Giant fight. Jump attacks on the foot for Phase 1, cast Golden Vow at the start of Phase 2, and then get two jump attacks on the hand for the Stagger. A jumping attack and a riposte on the eye, and then just play it safe and bonk his foot for the rest of the fight. Speak to Melina and burn the Erd Tree. Now run through for Amazula to the Dragon Temple Transept Grace. Hop back to Kale at the Church of Ella for the crafting kit. Back to Stormvale's secluded cell to grab two crack pots by the pot friends nearby. And then back to the Transept Grace to craft your sleep pots. Run in and put Godskin to sleep. Now, Skinny dies in three hits, but Fatty will be up after two and hit you after your third jump. You can either dodge through the shockwave or just tank it and then quickly attack afterwards. If you wanted to be super safe, you could throw another sleep pot at him after your second jump. Now head through the rest of the dungeon as usual all the way to the beside the Great Bridge side of Grace. Now the Draconic here is a little more of a problem than the other one, 
because of his massive health pull. Jump attacks are best for DPS, but you really have to watch those slow cooldowns as this guy does big damage. I decided to go with my usual parrying strategy with R2s to be safe. And speaking of those slow cooldowns, if there's one boss that's really going to punish you for them, it's Beast Clergyman. Now jump attacks are the most efficient way of punishing clergymen anyway, but you have to be especially careful with this weapon. Be ready to roll as soon as you land from an attack. Malekith is a little easier as the windows are so much larger. Roll the first swipe, then hit him with an R2 for the stagger, then get in two jump attacks. From here, just attack when it's safe, and as usual punish that slow 1-2. Head to the Ashen Capital and level up at the Grace. Now I just want to stress that what I do now is completely optional because what I'm going to do now is go fight one of the hardest bosses in the game for a better set of shoulder pads for my armour. Head into the Altus Hero's Grave and down past the chariots to the boss room. Now this fight is an absolute nightmare but can be made infinitely easier by following a few pieces of advice. First off, parries are your friend here, as the repost iframes prevent you from being ganked. Kill Adorvis first, as he's the more dangerous one, and do this while keeping the other one at full health, as you certainly don't want both of them in their phase twos. And finally and most importantly, take your time and play it safe. I'm letting this whole fight play out at 500% speed to show you just how cautious you need to be. This was actually about a six minute fight. Only go for a parry when they are completely separated. When Odorvis is down, you can be much more aggressive with the other one. Despite the memes earlier, the tree knights are far easier to parry than the sword ones. When you're done, equip the crucible axe armor for peak fashion. Now head back to the Ashen Capital and up towards Bed of Chaos. Buff up outside the arena and kill him with jump attacks in his speech. Says, I commend your speech, but alas, none shall take the throne. Oh no, 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 that wasn't even close. Right, warp to the Celia Crystal Tunnel in Kaelid and ride out into the swamp. Buff up next to the Stake of Marika and ride in to do five jumping attacks to kill Commander O'Neill. Then walk to Castle Morn, Rampart Grace in Weeping Peninsula and buy some Kukris. Okay, this is a little complicated, but it's worth it. Golden Vow. Flame grant me strength. Two hand the standard and use its weapon arm. Pop an exalted flesh. Refill your FP. Drink your Physic, swap your Arsenal Charm to the Jar Shard. Run behind him and do two jumping attacks. Then Star Caller Cry and the follow-up attack. Then throw one Kukri. It took me nearly an hour to figure that out. But even if it took ten, it's still better than fighting him. Now for Godfrey. And this time I went for jumping attacks. They are a little risky, but we're pretty tanky with our shiny armour. When he gets to about 60%, try to get a jumping attack in on both sides of that stamp attack that he does. If you do, you can stagger Hora Lu at the start of phase 1. For him, as usual, attack after the grab attacks and then use that double slam as an opportunity to punish. Now it's time to backtrack a bit for Rani's questline. Speak to her, then grab the Finger Slayer Blade from the Knight's Sacred Ground. Then back to her for the statue, 
and to the Karin study hall and all the way up to the top for the curse mark of death. You can now go back to Renner's Rise and use the teleporter to get to Ainsel River. Run through Noxtella and the Lake of Rot all the way to Astor. Now I will admit that I may have messed up slightly here. Arguably it would have been better to do Astor a lot earlier in this run as our weapon deals extra damage. So feel free to do this much earlier in your playthroughs. Now head to Fia for a deeply satisfying Fia's Champions fight. One shot the first one, then two shot the second one. Then wait for the three musketeers to fully spawn in and use Starcaller Cry to obliterate them. Get a hug from Fear and into Fortis Axe. We do enough damage to just spam jumping attacks on the foot for a very easy fight. Now to get to the Halig Tree. So back to Ordener Town. Once again, I'm using Ordener Skip here as it still works on 107, but see the Faith Guide for the Light Roll strategy if this gets patched in the future. Jump on the pillar, line up your compass to the right of this notch and do two jumps with the direction order being 12 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Run through the Halig Tree all the way to Loretta. Our damage is great now so we can just spam jumping our ones between all of her attacks. As usual, those big blue slashes are great opportunities for damage if you want to play it super safe. Head through Elphiel to grab the Grace by Melania. Now I'll level with you. The last four fights of this run are all pretty rough. The lack of posture damage and those slow recoveries really starts becoming a problem from here on in. So the order in which you approach them doesn't matter too much. Go for whatever boss you fear the least on a strength build first. For me, that's Moog. So head to Altus and bonk Eleonora for the purifying crystal tier. Then equip it at the midpoint grace. Now the good news for Moog is that phase 1 is fine. We do enough damage to keep him casting and trigger phase 2 pretty quickly. The bad news is because of our stamina and our damage, we're pretty much going to have to fight his full phase 2 without having any staggers on our side. My best advice here is to not be greedy and keep it to only a single jumping attack at a time. Now for Plassey, and this isn't too bad. It is possible to get six jumping attacks in at the start and then get two on the head for big damage. But you have to play pretty much flawlessly for this, so it's probably not worth the risk. As usual, punish the claw attacks with R1s, run to his back for the fire breaths, and run away from the lasers and rebuff towards the end. Now for Radabeast, and it's actually Radagon that's the main problem here. Your best bet is to be super aggressive at the start, to control the first half of the fight and get a stagger after the jump. This will trigger the triple slam and then you can nearly kill him in the recovery. Then it's just a case of playing it safe and waiting for your moment for that final blow. For Elden Beast, it's a pretty standard fight. Just get your jump attacks in for all of the openings. And now finally, Melania. Now for strategy here, 
I'd advise you against doing what we've been doing for the whole run so far, using jump attacks. While they do really good damage, the slow recovery combined with Melania's speed means that you can hit her perfectly at the end of one of her attacks. But because of that slow recovery, be completely defenseless to her next attack. If it's the 1 2, that's two flasks gone if you're at full health. If it's waterfowl, you're dead. My solution to the surprise of absolutely no one was to get naked and break out the buckler. If you really don't want to parry her, you could either do a charged R2 setup with the Star Scourge Greatswords and the Axe Talisman, taking advantage of those openings when she lands from a jump. Or you could even go level up the Greatsword that we started with at the very beginning and do exactly the same strats that we used in the Giant Crusher build with Lion's Claw. But for me, this was the most logical option. And a little tip here for parrying Melania with any large and slow weapon. Get your parry, take the riposte, then do a single charged R2. Then, as you're in the animation, spam dodge backwards. This will keep you clear of whatever attack she does afterwards, and if it's waterfowl, you're already at a distance, so it's easier to get away from. If you'd like to try this out, but you don't feel confident parrying Melania, you can check out my detailed guide on it. And that's it, how to make a seriously cool strength in build in Elden Ring. If you've made it this far and actually tried this build, please let me know how you got on in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave me a comment with a future build suggestion and subscribe to my channel for more Elden Ring build guides. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.